the first question they ask is who should go up for us first against the Canaanites to fight against them. The question is kind of strange. From Moses to Joshua, all the Israelites would go up together for battle. And uh, when two and a half tribes wanted to stay in the east of Jordan, and not cross the Jordan River and claim the East of Jordan as their inheritance. Moses said, no, you must first go with your brothers to fight. First cross the Jordan River and later you can come back to claim the East of Jordan as your land. And Another strange thing is in the book of Judges, we cannot find the Levites. And there was no tabernacle, no priest, no Levites. So seems like ministry in the presence of God had been lost. They didn't know God. The young people, the first generation, at the second generation, the new generation, they may not know the history of how God had led them. How God had led their ancestors. But God answered them according to their question. And maybe God was thinking, could these children learn to rely on God? The question they asked was, who shall be first to go up? So they were not as united as the Israelites before. Maybe God let them learn from the lesson, learn a lesson from their mistake. First two, and the Lord said, Judah shall go up. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me into my allotted territory, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the parasites into their hand, and they killed 10,000 men of Bezek. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the parasites. Then Adonai and Bezek fled, and they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. And Adonai Bezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off his together scraps under my table as I have done, so God has repaid me. Then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. So even God answered like that, Judah maybe was afraid, and so he asked Simeon to help. And they made a covenant saying, help me to fight against the Canaanites, and later I will help you go to get your allotted territory. Actually, they knew that it would be more powerful to be united together. But they didn't fight together in the beginning. They only focused on their allotted land. And they just wanted to take care of their own business. So the attitude was bad. They destroyed the unity. 
so what the Israelites could do would be very, very few and limited. And did Judah hold on to God's word and march forward by faith? No. Judah added something else to God's word to put his security on something else, not just on the word of God. So from chapter 1 of the book of Judges, you can see that the Israelites trust in God had decreased, not comparable to the time in Moses, the time of Moses or the time of Joshua. So there was some chaos. They were not united. They didn't have great faith and trust in the word of God. Well, ideally, after the death of Joshua, they should seek the Lord. Who have you chosen among us to succeed Joshua to lead us? Because from the history of Israel, when Moses, before Moses died, he sought the Lord. Who should succeed him? And God chose Joshua, and so Moses laid hands on him. And, <coughs> and God chose Joshua, saying there would be no one who could stand before him or in all his lifetime. But before Joshua died or afterwards, they did not seek the Lord about who would succeed Joshua. There was no priest, there was no Levite who would function. So you could see that the core of the faith had been corroded. As we read more, see, if they would, if Judah would ask Simeon for help, why would they not also ask the other tribes to help? Maybe Judah had a better relationship and closer with Simeon, or maybe Judah, or maybe Simeon was more powerful to fight. But we can see for sure that everybody was taking care of their own business. And so they killed 10,000 men in Bezek. Judah and Simeon, they had the victory against Adonai and Bezek. As Adonai and Bezek fled, they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Actually, the Israelites never would do this. The Adonai Bezek, uh, the Canaanites, they would do it like that. So you can see that the Israelites were following the ways of the Canaanites. That was why God warned the Israelites to 
not follow the customs of the Canaanites. They were not pleasing to God. God did not ask the people to did not ask the Israelites to torture. The people they defeated. Adonai Bezek, he did that to seven the kings. That was the torture. He showed our his power. He was proud. So we need to reflect. Do not let the pride in us increase and grow. Because God receives the proud, but help the humble ones. Otherwise, pride would become a God. When men choose the way of pride, God's presence will leave. God will even resist us. The Israelites, they follow the way of Adonai Bezek and treated him accordingly. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. That was unnecessary. Why would they bring him to Jerusalem. place that they wanted to go and defeat and take over. So they wanted to give a show to the people in Jerusalem. And they killed him in front of people of Jerusalem to scare the people there. Actually, God did not instruct them to do that. It was not necessary to do that because the word of God would be enough. But they added something on top of God's word and promises, something worldly. Today we are the same. We add on something on top of God's word. In the old church, it was the same. I was a businessman. So I would bring the business way to the church because I was in the deacon board. So I encourage the church to use the memo system, have the agenda in the meeting, to track the execution of the meeting decisions, I brought in the management skills into the church. I thought these are good things. The entrepreneurs or encourage people to do this so that business can prosper. So until I came to 611, I joined the staff team, and I realized, oh, Pastor Joshua, what are you doing? The first day, I asked Pastor Joshua, there's a lot of uh, problems in the church administration. We don't know when the co-workers come in and leave. Should you set up some batches? And so you know when people come in and leave, and who is more hardworking, and also, shall we do something to, like, to use the ISO system to also check people if they execute their jobs after meeting. Actually, when I was a businessman, I didn't even give a card to my employees. I asked them to scan their fingerprints when they enter and leave the office. I thought 
Pastor Joshua would be very happy about my suggestion, but then he, he was actually quite concerned and, and he fouled his brow. He said, the church management is different from the companies. We should let God lead us and let God manage us. It's not the companies. Style. So he shared with me for over half an hour, and then I realized, oh, I actually brought in the worldly ways to the church. In the world, we do this because we do not trust people. So we add on things to control them. But in God's kingdom, we try to tr we trust people. We will trust God's guidance. We don't use the worldly ways. The first chapter in the book of Judges, the Israelites mix the ways of the world into their own culture. And in, um, we um, would not ask them to cut off the toes and thumbs of the people they capture. It should be like the time of Joshua when they would surround the city wall of Jericho seven times, seven days, and they would fall down. They would fall down. They should let God lead first. But now in the book of Judges time, they added in the worldly values. Shall we should reflect, have we acted on something? Top of the word of God. Every day else we try to go first. Just like when Joshua crossed the river. The Lord instructed them to take Jericho first. But here, in the time of Judges, they did not follow God's guidance. So it was a very sad story, a bad beginning. And you will see that actually it will go worse and worse. First eight. Now the children of Judah fought against Jerusalem and took it. They struck it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites, who dwelled in the mountains in the south and in the lowland. The Judah went against the Canaanites who dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kijath Abar, and they killed Shisha, Haman, and Talmai. So Judah fought against Jerusalem and then later to Judah, uh, to Hebron, which is south of Jerusalem. They didn't stay in Jerusalem. We understand more as we read on, and that would bring some consequences. Verse 11, from there they went against the inhabitants of the beer. The name of the beer was formerly Kijath Safa. Then Caleb said, whoever attacks Kijath Safa and takes it, to him I will give my daughter Asa as wife, and of Neil, 
The son of Kinnas, Caleb's younger brother, took it. So he gave him his daughter, Aksa, as well. Now it happened when she came to him that she urged him to ask her father for her field. And she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? So she said to him, Give me a blessing, since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So it was hard to take the bird. And actually, Caleb was old. He was in the, of the gen, same generation as Joshua. And Caleb had been through the 40 years in the wilderness. So if he would have left Egypt when he was in his 30s, it would have been about 70 years after he attacked to Jericho. And now he must be very old. He wanted someone to help him. So who can help me to attack Hijraf Sever and take it? Then I will give my daughter as son as wife. So Caleb's younger brother took it. His, the son of Caleb's younger brother, his nephew, took it. And so Caleb gave him his daughter, Asa. You can see that this daughter, his heart was towards his, her husband. She said, as my father for a field, we need to have our own inheritance. So it's like today in Hong Kong, a, a girl will ask her husband to ask her father to buy an apartment for them, saying that my father has a lot of properties. Ask him for one, then we don't need to have a harsh life. He has many properties. So when Asa went to visit her father, after she got married, her father asked him, what do you wish? How is your new life after marriage? And the daughter was very smart. She said, give me a blessing, since you have given me land in the south. Give me also springs of water. So she was asking for more. To the Israelites, a land with springs of water is very good. There will be life in the land where there is a spring of water. So Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. Actually, Asa's heart was filled with the worldly things. She wanted the things of the world. So she asked her husband to ask her father for a field, and then she asked for springs of water. And Caleb gave her both the 
upper and lower springs. He, he focused on God's promises. So he gave to his daughter more than she asked for or imagined. Caleb didn't really care about the springs of the field. He fathered his relationship with God. He belonged to the first generation. This life had not been passed down to the next generation. So today, we need to ask ourselves, have we passed on our faith to the next generation? Are they like us? Who is leading our next generation? Verse 16, now the children of the Kenites, Moses' father-in-law, went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south near Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. The Judah went with his brother Simeon, and they attacked Canaanites and inhabited Zephar, and utterly destroyed it. So the name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Asa with his territory, Ashkelon with his territory, and Akron with his territory. So the Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had said. Then he expelled from there the three sons of Nanak. But the children of Benjamin did not drive from the Jebusites, inhabited Jerusalem, so the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. So they left the city of Palms, which may be Jericho. They went to the wilderness of Judah, and they took city by city. They went down very south to Arad, to Gaza. And verse 19, because the Lord was with Judah, but that was kind of strange. They could drive out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland because they had chariots of iron. So if the Lord was with Judah, why would they not be able to drive out the inhabitants of the lowland? Judah had God, but the inhabitants of the lowland did not. Uh, they, they had chariots of iron. So what was the problem? You can see that the favor of the Israelites had decreased. Not everyone had chariots of iron. Everyone was still using marching soldiers. Just imagine and arrows and bows. But then suddenly you see someone come with the tents. So it was like that. Um, Judah and Simeon, they did not have faith to fight against people with the chariots of iron. They did not seek God. How can we overcome the people with ch the chariots of iron? Actually, God has all the strategies, just like we could have the Israelites take the city of Jericho. And Caleb, he expelled from there the three sons of Enoch. He's like a giant. So, you can you see the difference? Some, the, the people Judah, they were afraid to drive out the inhabitants of the lowland. But Caleb, he could expel from there the three sons of Anak. So you can see the difference of faith. So we should remind ourselves today, what do we see? Do we see the difficulties? Or do we see God? 
kind of focused on the promise of God, so he didn't regard to enemies. But Judah, yeah. Judah, they did not have faith to drive out the inhabitants of the lowland. Even though the Lord was with them, they could only see the chariots of iron. First, twenty two, and the house of Joseph also went up against Bethel. The Lord was with them, so the house of Joseph sent men to spy out Bethel. The name of the city was formerly Luz. And when the spies saw a man coming out of the city, they said to him, Please show us the entrance to the city, and we will show you mercy. So he he showed them the entrance to the city, and they struck the city with the edge of the sword. But they let the man and all his family go, and the man went to the land of the Hittites, built a city and called its name Nas, which is its name to this day. So they learned from Joshua to send spies to the land. And then they saw someone coming out of the city and asked him to show them the entrance to the city, uh, which means oh, is there a special secret way to go inside the city? And so they and he showed them the entrance to the city. And they let this man go. So this man he built another city and named it Luz. So that means they, the house of Joseph was not successful. They did not ask the Lord how to take the city. The, the city of Luz just moved to another place. But they find they chose the easy way. It's a human wisdom. And so they should have sought the Lord and attacked the city instead of using the Lord in wisdom. First 27, notice the word did not. It appears many times in this section. However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shea and his villages or Tanakh and his villages, all the inhabitants of Dor and his villages, all the inhabitants of Ibrim and his villages, all the inhabitants of Megiddo and his villages. For the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. It came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute, but did not completely drive them out. So the Israelites could not clear all the idols of the land. And they put the Canaanites under tribute. Um, to put them, to make them to harsh labor, but did not completely drive them out. So you see many times this word appears, did not, did not, did not, they did not seek the Lord. And so in the end, it didn't do anything well. First 29, did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer, and the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Nor did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Nahalo. So the Canaanites dwelt among them and were put under tribute. Nor did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akor or the inhabitants of Sidon. Or Alab, Akzeb, Habab, Afik, or Rehob, 
So the Asherites Ash brought among the Canaanites the inhabitants of the land, but they did not drive them out. Mount the Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shema, all the inhabitants of Beth Anna, but they dwelt among the Canaanites the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shema, Shemesh, and Beth Anath were put under tribute to them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains, but they would not allow them to come down to the valley. And the Amorites were determined to dwell in Mount Paris in Ajalo and Ishab. Yet when the strength of the house of Joseph became greater, they were put under tribute. Now the boundary of the Amorites was from the Zen of Akraben from Sila and upward. So you see this verse being repeated many times, did not, did not, did not, did not. The land, the inhabitants of the land were among them. But then God still gave them grace. The inhabitants of the Canaanites became their slaves, but these also buried a bomb for the future, that these will become their enemies. So they make the scout of God's promises. So today we should reflect who is actually leading the Israelites? Who did they listen to? The voice of God? Or did they follow the world? So today we should reflect how do we follow God today? Have we watered down God's word? Have we brought in the worldly things? Oops. We should reflect today. And let God continue to lead us forward. It's the one who reigns. Let's praise him. We can seek him. He's with us. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. From creation to salvation, you're the only one who does wonderful things. Lord, we lift you up with you. are so precious. Only you do wonderful works. We rely on you to be victorious. Today, the last week of 2020, God led us to the book of Judges, the first chapter. Who's leading in your life? Who is our Lord? Is the Lord God our Lord? Or are we ourselves the Lord? I'm stretching to the two presents. First 19, God was with Judah. First 22, the Lord with them, was with them. How come they had the promise of God but couldn't do that? Is that also a reflection for our lives? We have the word of God and his promises and his presence. We're still in, uh, not able. The end of the year. Let's humble ourselves to reflect. God gives us an opportunity to reflect so we can have a breakthrough in 2021. has to share with us about Caleb. He was very old. Now Joshua has passed away. He couldn't go and attack the city, but he, he went to find someone to help him attack the city of Kijar Sather. And verse 20, Caleb could expel 
From there, the three sons of Anak from Hebron. He was old, but he could expel the enemies because he had the faith, and he was close to the heart of God. He was determined to claim God's promises. How come Judah had the prom- had the presence of God, but could not? Expel the inhabitants of the lowland because they had the chariots of iron. They thought, "Oh, it's good enough. We have the mountains, but there were chariots of iron in the lowland." Verse 22. The house of Joseph had the presence of God. It's more convenient to send a spy to to ask someone for the way, and then lose the city remained. Just find something more comfortable. Or do we care about the heart of God? Caleb believed promises. He did not do things for himself. He could give her. His daughter, both the upper and lower springs. He didn't care about what he possessed. He wanted to finish the will of God. So today, the end of the year, do you have the heart to fulfill the will of God, or do we compromise because we take care of our own flesh? Compromised. We have, have we put God in the right position? So let's reflect now. We're still in the flesh. We have done a lot of things as acted on that is not pleasing to God. The more just like the Israelites, they cut off the thumbs and toes of Adonai Bezek. Have we done something more that is not pleasing to God, but have not done what the Lord wants from us? Just like the Israelites. They did not expel all the inhabitants of Canaan. In 2020, have we hold on tightly to God's will? We added something, or have we、uh, not done the will of God? May the Lord shine His light in us. We're entering to 2021. The last three days, we should thank God that He gives us an opportunity to reflect. So we not make the same mistakes again. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come shine in us, shine your light in us. Confess that a lot of times we have been pleasing our own flesh and not your heart. We have done a lot more that we have that you have not asked us to do because we were in fear or in pride. We have done a lot of things you have not asked us to do. We follow the ways of the world. We were in fear. We all went to grab for the toilet paper. We followed the ways of the world. Lord, please forgive us. We have sinned against you. Work or you know, finance, in our relationships or in terms of ministries, we have pleased ourselves more to follow the world. Lord, forgive us. What you have asked us to do, we are not able. We have not done a lot of things in relationships. What you want from us? We are not able. 
We did not. We did not. We did not. We don't want to deal with our hearts. We find it difficult and troublesome. We're not willing. We're afraid of troubles, difficulties. Lord, please forgive us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to reflect how much we lack, because we don't let your word be our word, and not let you be our God. We only please ourselves and not you. So today we come before you and ask you for the heart of Caleb, the spirit of Caleb. Not depends on our own strength, but because of your promise that we're willing to to follow you, value your will. It depends depend on our age, our old age. We're not trying to please ourselves for our own benefits, but we know that your kingdom is coming. You have your will for Israel. Even though Caleb was old, he was not looking at himself, but the kingdom of Israel. So come and help us not to look at ourselves, but to see that your kingdom has to be expanded. Help us to overcome all difficulties. Help us to see your will. Take away our selfishness, our pride. Take our, our remove our perspective that follows the world. Change us, transform us. We need your mercy. We need your guidance. Lord, you're the one who guides us and leads us. Yeah, our Lord. Yeah, our. The Lord of Hong Kong, the Lord of the world, Lord, help us. So we will trust in you only, only you, our God. Only you help us to be close to you, to love you, and to follow you. Let's respond with this song. Worship our God. First one, who shall be the first to go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? They inquired of the Lord, but they asked the wrong question. They inquired of the Lord, but they didn't know God. Is this also our reflection today? When we ask God questions, does it depend on our knowledge of God, or just ask God according to our own will? When we set up multiple choice for God, God, you choose A, B, C, or D. Today, we may inquire of the Lord. Do we have a presupposition that we set up our? We, we put God in our own rational mindset, in our rational boundary. We want God to do what our hearts want to do. We want God to do according to our will. So who's leading who? Is God leading us, or are we trying to? Threat God and lead. First 19. The Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland, because they had chariots of iron. The God who divided the Red Sea. The one who 
Help the water of Jericho. Uh, who held the water of the Jordan River? Could he not fight against the chariots of iron? Have we minimized and decreased the God in our hearts? Have we decreased His power in our hearts? The Creator of heaven and earth, the one who touched the mountains. And it's Mount, the one who could divide the Red Sea, and spare all the chariots of Egypt and here in Canaan, just the chariots of iron in the lowland. They were greater than God. So in our lives today, what is greater than God? The fear of the chariots of iron is greater than our faith in God. Today, do we worry more about finances, more than God, who can divide the Red Sea? Today, the fear of the future of Hong Kong, the worries, has it covered the God who divided the Red Sea? Today, like how helpless we feel in relationships, or how we feel helpless teaching our kids, has that helplessness covered the God who divided the Red Sea? So who's leading who? Behind this question is asking, where is God? The first chapter of the Book of Judges, the Tabernacle, the Cov Ark of Covenant, the priests, the Levites, they did not appear, which means the presence of God did not appear. So, brothers and sisters, we need to pray for our lives, pray for our faith, so that the Ark of Covenant can go forward before us again, so that God's presence can lead us again. So we can fix our eyes on God coming to the end of 2020. Let's learn to hear, see, see, see God over the storm in all our ways. We need to see God and follow God to follow the Ark of the Covenant and lift it up to walk, to march forward. Don't let the Ark of Covenant dim and be dim in our lives. Don't let it disappear in our lives. Pray for our hearts, brothers and sisters. Pray for our spirits and our faith. Today, God's Word is His Ark of Covenant. We need to follow so pray for ourselves, Holy Spirit, come and fill us, open our spiritual eyes, so in 2020, seeing 2020, we can see God, we can follow the Ark of the Covenant closely to go forward, let the God of heaven and earth, the Creator, be greater than the chariots of iron. Our God be greater than anything than the world. Let us put God first before people, before the land. Help us to strengthen our faith so we can return, repent, to go back to you, follow you closely. Give us the heart of Caleb so we can follow you, seek you all the days of our life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.